Hello everybody, Skyrim's 64-bit special edition has released. And this is some pretty exciting news for some of us. But before I start explaining why it's exciting news and why also not to be excited about it, I'm gonna clear up a little bit of a misconception. People have for a while, including myself once or twice, called this a remaster. It's not really a remaster, it's just a 64-bit with some very minor visual effects and textures thrown in. Bottom of the barrel stuff. Look at Final Fantasy IV, the original. Then remaster. Then remaster the remaster. Oh, look at this, Call of Duty remaster. What do you get out of remasters? Significant changes. Do you know why? Because Legend of Zelda said it best, master using it and you can have this. Well, I'm sorry, Link, you never mastered it. And we know this because the modding community has made much much more mastered content in the form of ENB presets and texture packs that Bethesda opted not to use, or not to even attempt to replicate. But for those who play on consoles and have never experienced the truly mastered content for it to be remastered, they look at their original, original content, and they look at the minor, minor upgrades that are presented to them and go, Oh my god, this is amazing! Even though we've had God Rays, we've had ENB presets, we've had texture packs, and we've certainly had better audio files than the compressed crap in this 64-bit port. And yes, it is a port. But let me explain why you should be excited for the 64-bit port. Because I'm not just slagging off Skyrim, I'm actually going to sing its praises in certain respects. But first we have to understand the technical side of how Skyrim works. So let's get to the biggest and best reason to like this new 64-bit port. You can access more memory. We've talked about this. Uh, channels like BroDuel and MXR have talked about it. But let's actually dive into it and explain it. A view of classic Skyrim on the 64-bit operating system like Windows 8.1 or 10 reveals a 32-bit executable running DirectX 9. Now the operating system itself has always had standards that say, hey, you're DirectX 9, you're not allowed to use more than four gigabytes of RAM. In earlier versions of Windows, you could get around this mandate, but the mandate is firm and enforced by the operating system in our 64-bit 8.1 and 10 variants. What this usually pans out to be is that Skyrim has an effective RAM cap of 3.5 gigabytes before it gets its hand slapped by the operating system, stutters, lags, and as it passes that cap, it kind of just crashes. That's classic Skyrim. Something you have to finely tune and balance when you're creating an extensive mod loadout. This 64-bit executable brings DirectX 11 to the table. And while not nearly as good as Vulkan, and in theory, because we haven't actually seen it in practice very much, DirectX 12, we'll take it. Because in reality, a great deal of PC enthusiasts and Skyrim enthusiasts usually have anywhere between 8 and 16 gigabytes of RAM, nearly twice that of what Skyrim was letting us use before in the 32-bit version. With an ENB managing our video memory, we were accessing our graphics card memory as well, so 2 to 6 gigabytes of RAM on top of that, giving most PC gamers an effective 10 to 20 or even above amount of RAM to play with but we could only use four of that at extreme maximum. So the biggest question I've been getting is, well, with this new Skyrim that can use all our RAM, will this let me install tons and tons of mods? And the answer is both yes and no. You are still limited in the number of ESP files you can use, the plugins that Skyrim uses. Furthermore, Skyrim is still using the same Papyrus virtual machine running in the background, which handles all the scripts. If you employ a ton of script-heavy mods, in the past, Papyrus had to compete with other aspects of Skyrim for its memory because it had a limited pool of four. Well, now that won't be a problem. Papyrus will have a cushy, large chunk of RAM to play with, and your textures, polygons, and spell effects and things will have their own slices of RAM without getting in each other's way because you got a huge pool to work with. However, I need to make this clear. That's only one piece of the puzzle you still have the most important part of the puzzle, your CPU. Skyrim is CPU heavy, and that means Papyrus is going to be competing with other tasks within Skyrim 
for processing power. If you've got a top-end system, that won't be much of a problem. But lower-end CPUs, this new addition won't fix their problem. So let's assume you're sitting on a good processor, a good video card with 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're free to install all the high-end mods you want, right? Well, I still know. You see, remember when I mentioned the Papyrus Virtual Machine that's running in the background while you're playing Skyrim? It handles all the scripts? That means NPCs, when you cast a spell, and even mods like Campfire, Frostfall, Realistic Needs and Diseases, and countless others are all performing tasks within the scripting engine simultaneously. Well, they aren't actually doing it simultaneously, there's a kind of queue running, and a task gets processed, another task gets processed, another task gets processed, until the entire queue is exhausted. Then, the next frame of animation that goes on your computer, they process everything again, and then again, and then again. Have you been playing the older Skyrim, fired an attack at a wall, the attack goes off but there's no explosion or sound effect of the attack impacting the wall, and then a couple seconds later while you're walking away, you hear the sound effect because it went off while you weren't paying attention? That's the scripting engine struggling to keep up with the number of scripts that are running and it actually gets behind and starts lagging. It doesn't matter how many system resources you can allocate. If your scripting engine gets clogged up, then the game slows down and can eventually crash. Ironically, this is caused mostly in users by not having too many script-heavy mods, but rather having a single mod amongst all the other mods that has some kind of bad script programming in it that slowly clogs up the engine over time. So, you may not notice until about 10 hours later that your loadout is kind of screwed. Congratulations! 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 Obviously, when this happens, eventually the community gets word of it and will tell you not to use certain mods like Clarilux, for instance. And thus, popular modding always adapts. You should still refrain from using a ton of script-heavy mods. Mod responsibly. Decide which script-heavy mods you want and which ones you can live without. And you may be asking, well then, what's the point of the special edition in the first place if I still have to manage what I'm going to install? As I said earlier, the scripting engine isn't competing for limited resources anymore. That means you can have awesome city mods, texture repacks, bunch of new loot drops, you know, higher res models and better static meshes. Mods that don't necessarily touch the scripting engine can be used in mass provide your hardware can support it. Whereas before, it was taking a huge chunk out of the pool of resources that your scripting engine was competing for and would potentially even crash your game, now those graphic-centric mods aren't really that big a consideration anymore. Yes, you, your hardware still needs to be able to support it and process everything in real time, otherwise you'll get lag. However, if we assume your hardware is up to snuff, that means you're going to have a much, much more stable experience in Skyrim while it's looking better than ever. So that brings us to our next topic, why not the Special Edition? Well, most of what I was saying above is predicated on the mods actually making their way to the Special Edition. You see, most mods that used the old version of Skyrim use these BSA files as packages to contain all of their assets. Well, unfortunately, the compression type for the BSAs has changed, so the BSAs have to be opened up by the mod author and recompressed into a brand new BSA file of the same name. Otherwise, Skyrim just plain won't start up. Also, there are certain NIF files, which are animation and graphic files. These particular file format has changed a bit, so not all of your old graphics are compatible and again have to be converted. This means some mods just aren't suitable anymore. So again, and just in terms of basic mods, some maintenance has to be done. You can't just grab the old mod, put it in. I tried that with the female body mod, CBBE, ended up having naked women walking around. And while some other people might enjoy that sort of thing, I found it to be very irritating, especially when attempting to live stream. Another problem is the script extender. Yes, indeed. The Skyrim script extender is what allowed certain mods like SkyUI to function properly, replacing the console-based user interface with something that is built for the PC, much easier to use, less clunky, has its own sort bars where you can type in the name of something in order to sort quickly looking for the item you want. It allowed for dynamic heads-up display mods to do all kinds of crazy stuff, and it allowed for, of course, mod configuration menus 
for you to properly choose the options for your particular experience. Unfortunately, as of right now, the Skyrim script extender isn't functional. The old version does not work with the new 64-bit executable. Here's the good news. For a while, people thought we were going to have to port in the Fallout 4 script extender and, you know, retrofit the Fallout 4 script extender, which is incomplete, by the way, for the Skyrim Special Edition. It turns out they didn't change very much. So the old version of Skyrim script extender is actually a lot, lot closer. As a result, they will have to do much, much less work. Uh, most of the groundwork is already laid. To my knowledge, Gopher is lending his assistance to Silverlock, and they are all working together to get this Skyrim Special Edition script extender up and running. I'm looking forward to it because we want more complex mods, not less complex mods. I know some people are like, well, the console users should be able to use all the mods too. Well, not if it's holding back modding. Ultimately, console users will only be able to use what the maximum that their console allows them to use. We shouldn't halt mod development or dumb down mod development just because everyone should be able to use it. The PC Master Race is a satirical label. It's meant for comedy. The basics of it aren't built in elitism. They're built in the idea that you've got this great machine, take advantage of it. Take full advantage of it. Don't let anyone hold you back. Make Skyrim the best Skyrim you can. And you know what? Unfortunately, we don't have that yet. The Skyrim Special Edition in its current state doesn't even have an ENB, not a proper one. It has a retrofitted Fallout 4 one that is kind of glitchy. Uh, Boris hasn't announced yet whether or not he's porting his ENB executable to Skyrim. But I'm really, really hoping that Boris does. Because the Skyrim Special Edition ENB would be a great thing. Number one, the ENB allows you to manage memory better. As I said earlier, you can take advantage of your video memory in addition to your regular memory. This is a good thing. Furthermore, it allows unprecedented customization of the graphics options. What if I don't like those badly programmed god rays that Bethesda added? Instead, I want to add custom god rays from, say, Tetrachromic ENB. Assuming Tetrachromic ENB actually had god rays. My point is, maybe I want to replace it with something made by the community. ENB lets you do that. So, Boris, please. You have a community that is waiting for that, and we'll offer you support where possible. But yes, we are currently in a waiting phase, where we are waiting for all the best mods to be ported to the Special Edition. It's not as easy as copying files, unfortunately, as we've discovered, but it is coming. So for those of you asking, should I install the Skyrim Special Edition right now, or should I enjoy my regular 32-bit Skyrim? The answer is... 32-bit Skyrim's probably where it's at right now. The mods are just better. But in a couple months, I'm thinking we're going to be doing a new mod codex. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you all for watching. Check the social media links for more content. And I will see you in Skyrim. Because I'm doing live streams. See you all there.